there's no need to get tense. Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. If you have a kicker and Neo living in the same house, be careful. Here's the kicker power supply, and here's the Neos. Or is it the other way around? They look almost exactly alike, until you take a closer look. The kicker works on 12 volts and the Neo on 48. If, like me, you mix them up and plug the 48 volt Neo power supply into the kicker, you're probably going to kill its power board. Then you'll have to contact the folks at Wahoo and pay them 60 bucks to send you a replacement. Here's how to install the new board. Well, actually first, here's how not to do it. If you remove the two screws holding this top cap, you'll find a small board you might think is the power board, but it's not. It's actually the Bluetooth receiver and optical sensor. Getting to the power board is a little more challenging. Get a 19 millimeter socket and remove the nuts, washer, and flywheel. Underneath, you'll find the coils that create the magnetic resistance. Be careful not to damage them. On the shaft, you'll notice a shaft key. Set it aside and put it in a safe place. If the key isn't in the shaft, it probably fell out when you pulled the flywheel off. Before moving on, make sure you locate it. Next, use a pair of pliers to remove the retention clip. Not this one, this one. When the clip is removed, safely set aside the washer ring underneath and remove the coil assembly. It'll help to support it on a block to prevent damage to the cables. Remove the side of the cover plate that has a label on it and you'll find the power board is underneath. When handling the new board out of its anti-static pouch, it'll be a good idea to use an ESD strap if you have one. I could see the problem on my board right away. As expected, the electrolytic capacitor blew. Electrolytic syrup had leaked out and when I pressed it gently, even more came out with an amusing squirt. The board was serviceable and I may have been able to just replace the capacitor instead of the entire board. At any rate, I removed the old board by unclipping the three cables and removing the four screws. Here's the new board installed next to the old one. I reattached the cover and proceeded to button everything back up. Be careful to not kink the cables during reassembly and note the alignment stem. When reinstalling the coil assembly, you may need to gently tap it until it's fully seated. Don't forget to install the washer ring before installing the retention clip. Before installing the flywheel, make sure the shaft key is in place and it's aligned with the slot. Once the washer and nut are reinstalled, the repair will be complete. If you get the green light on the power supply during power-up, you're good to go. If you'd like to learn more about electronics repair, especially for antique radios, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get updates. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Right on.